Right, well, we want to carry on, quite frankly. If it's not one thing, it's another, isn't it? It's your fingers or your toes or it's your eyes or your throat or it's your tummy or uh, well, it's diarrhoea, isn't it? Or sickness and what a carry Liz's presentation, I've got to be honest with you, just about, just about hits the mark for me. Over a six to eight week period, I'll experience most of this, of what Liz has talked about. And um, it's hard work, isn't it? Fingertips to TPN. Um, but you can make it easy. In 20 years, from cold fingers to intestinal failure and TPN, for the first 10 years, it was just good old Raynaud's. My mum said, oh, you've got Raynaud's, don't worry about it, it's all right. And 20 years later, she's fitter than me. All right, she's 87 and she's fitter than me, and she's got Raynaud's. But she hasn't had fin um, ulceration and, 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 and the things that are associated with that. She's just had basic Raynaud's. So like I said, you know, for 10 years, I didn't really know I'd got it. Um, intestinal failure is something that's just happened in the last two years. I had two bacteria of intestinal failure, the distension, the tummy aches, the sickness, the diarrhea, um, days on my back um, with hot water bottles, rubbing it just gently, just massaging my tummy, gets me through it. And now I can feel them coming on. And now it's really quite mild, about 24 to 36 hours. And I can get myself through it without having to go to hospital. Not having to have a gastric nasal tube. Okay? So it's about being aware of myself. TPN, I wouldn't survive without TPN. I, I, there's a t display at the back, and that's what got me here. That's what it takes to get me here today. Okay? It's one day um, on there. Um, if I'm not eating food, I can um, take uh, five, four, five, six um, of the Fasubans, which is a, a food supplement. Um, the TPN that I've brought with me there is in three chambers. What's TPN? Total Parenteral Nutrition. Okay. I have a, a line in my chest, um, a Hitman <coughs> line in my chest. And um, I'm totally self-sufficient of the hospital or nurses when my wife helps me. Okay, so every other night I actually um, connect up and I feed overnight for seven hours um, from about seven o'clock in the evening to seven o'clock in the morning. I can change that if I wanted to. I could, I could actually have the, the rucksack there and have it on my back and, 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 and feed during the day if I wanted to. I prefer it at night because it frees me up. I still work three hours a day. So semi-retired, um, and I have been now for about seven years. And I've slowly been just reducing how I deal with my life and how I cope with it. Um, and uh, TPN now is, 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 I think, probably the future. Um, I'm more or less vegetarian. I'm lactose-free. I'm uh, gluten-free, okay? I can tolerate fish and small amounts of chicken, probably once a week each. I eat or I graze through the day. So I might get up at seven and have a yogurt and a glass of water, take my first round of tablets. And then probably mid-morning I might have a Lunch Lunchtime is my main meal. My main meal won't be any more than maybe a cup of soup, maybe a banana, maybe another little bit of yogurt, maybe a packet of crisps. It won't be any more than that and it may not be as much as that. Mid-afternoon I'll probably have another fasubin. And then in the evening I might have the other half of the soup. Um, and a glass of water, but I drink lots of water through the day, okay? Why am I gravitating towards soup and soft? Because of the esophageal and the, the not being able to swallow. I'm just naturally doing it. I can't be doing with it anymore. But with soups, fresh soups, we make them ourselves, I'm still getting the nutrition in or some natural nutrition. Liz touched on, on Gave, gastroenteral vasculatasia. Well, after 10 years of having cold fingers and sore fingertips and having bouts of antibiotics and a plaster here and a plaster there and all the rest of it, they diagnosed GAVE. Well, it's still a bit off the mark, isn't it? Because that's not Raynaud's. Commonly known as water, water, uh, watermelon stomach. And if you look at the... That's the stomach. And um, that, say that's the top of the melon. You've all seen a watermelon, haven't you? 
and that's why they call it water, water, water um, melon stomach, is because it looks like a watermelon. Okay, I was diagnosed in two thousand, or I had problems in two thousand and five with anemia, and most people run blood count runs at about fourteen, thirteen, fourteen. I was down to seven, very wobbly, possible double vision because of it. And I was driving home one night, and I said to her, you know, I can't drive any further. I just can't see what, I just can't concentrate. And we got home, and I went to the doctor the next day, and she said, you can't drive for at least two to three weeks. Okay, and that was the start of Gave. It took, another, that was in the spring, summer of 2005, it took into January, February of 2006 to actually get me to a doctor in Bristol that could diagnose what it was, and it was, it was Gave. I had uh, five, six treatments over, five treatments over 12 months, just about 12 months, every six weeks, I went in and had the argon plasma, which Liz touched on just now. Um, mild sedative, um, telescope down the, down the throat, and um, quick squirt, probably about I don't know, five, 10 minutes, I can't remember how long I was out for, but that was it, about five or 10 minutes, very quick. And that, that would, as Liz said, it, it just burnt away or, or cauterized the tummy, if, for a better way of putting it, and just carefully get back to it. Maybe have only have two or three days off a week, and I get back to work. What is Gave all about? Well, we don't know. As a kid, I took aspirin. That was the family drug, paracetamol, aspirin. There might be a connection there, because now, if I could tolerate aspirin, I probably may not have to take sildenafil or lasartan, or I've got trinite patch on, which helps dilate the, um, the, the blood vessels. So, but I can't, so I'm taking a lot of drugs because aspirin is well known for, for opening and dilating. So moving on, isoprost infusion. Um, isoprost infusion, like I said, um, this is when in 2009, they said, actually, you've got Crest. So, what's Crest? Well, we know that Crest is calcification, low nodes phenomenon, escophageolitis. Um, what's the S? Yes, dectasia, yeah, that's right, and, and um, talangectasia. So, um, I've got talangectasia. You know, I've got the, the breaking down of blood vessels in my head and on my face, on my nose, on my cheek. I've got it in my hands, yeah. I've got telangiectasia has shown up in, in my uh, scophagus. Um, so, what are we going to do about it, Mike? Well, first off, the first isoprost infusion I had, I was on for 24 hours at a time, monitored every hour automatically for my blood pressure. And I'm in for a week because of the gave and the medication, the oliprost is so strong, it can make me bleed. So they monitor me and keep me in hospital. Okay, what's it like? It works. Um, they start off with a low dose and they slow every half an hour, they crank it up until you're on quite a strong dose. What does it make you feel like? It makes you feel sick. It gives you a headache. It flushes you, makes you go red and flush and warm. I have learned to sleep through it. Okay, they give you anti-sickness because you feel sick. It helps you to sleep, it helps you to relax. And, um, and, I, and luckily I can get through it. I'm fortunate that maybe I've got a higher thresh pain, uh, threshold, pain threshold. It is worth tolerating it. You get up, within half an hour of coming off the treatment, you're up, you're out, the headaches are gone, the flushing is done, and you feel normal. It's not a cure right there and then. It'll take probably four, five, six weeks for it to come through. Luckily, I'm just getting over a sort of an outbreak of, of um, digital alterations at, the, uh, alterations at the moment, but when, on one occasion I went in to have an isoprost infusion, I had digital ulcers, and they gave me some antibiotics, and it cleared up. Now, whether that was just by chance or not, I don't know. But now, every time I have an isoprost infusion, and if I've got any digital problems, I tend to ask for 
um, uh, flu succicillin, I think is what they give me, and it really does work. And it, I don't know whether that's something that's worked for you and where you are, but that's what works for us in, in Exeter in Devon. It's worked for me. Okay. Um, one thing about isoprost infusion, always try to have a midline, always a midline rather than here, the cannulas, because they get sore after two or three days. Uh, the, it is a very strong product. Uh, it leaked on me once and had a, a stain on my arm. So it is something to be, it is a very strong pro product. So it, 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 it will make you feel ill. So each day cre crept off. Well, it's still creeping off on me, to be quite honest. Um, you know, I don't know when it's going to stop. How did I manage it? Well, to be quite frank, I didn't. Not really very well. But my wife did. Okay, my wife is my doctor, my nurse, my companion. Okay, and she, you, your, your partner really is the most important person to you. Or a friend, your best friend. Or your mum or your dad. Or your brother. Okay, and it's Alison that got me through it. The doctors, yes, they give us all the information. They give us a fantastic amount of support for when you're at home, you're on your own. And take that person with you and get them to listen to what you're being told. Because I'll be honest with you, you just shut down sometimes. And I think probably I did. I didn't take it in immediately. I've got to be honest with you. I didn't ignore it, but you know, that's, I think that's human nature, isn't it? So that's how I managed. I had got a great support, a great support. And it was my sons. They supported me as well, and my mum and dad. And like I said, they're fitting me at 1987, and, and I wish that, uh, you know, I wish that uh, I was as fit as them. Okay, coping with intestinal failure. Well, intestinal failure, it, it's just, it, it does just about bottom you out. And, um, just do as you're told. And you, but naturally you will find and you'll gravitate towards things that help you cope with it. I think the body and the mind is a wonderful thing. You'll think, how can I cope with this? And you might just rub your tummy, it's funny enough, it works. Or you want to have a hot bottle and you just put it on your back. And it just helps to stimulate your bowels or your intestines. And it just helps you through it. I'm flat on my back, usually between 24, uh, maybe 36, 40 hours. Okay, I'm out, I'm out of it, and it is painful, it lasts a long time, I'm sick, I get diarrhoea, incontinence, I'm down to incontinence pads. Um, sometimes I'm just sick, sometimes I just have incontinence, um, but if you manage it, you can still keep going to work. I work three hours a day, two to five, and I wear my incontinent pads. Get on with it. And, you know, I just said to myself, get over it, Mike, if you want to enjoy life. Um, just think about it. This is what I said to myself. Just think, if you want to carry on, you've got to use these things. Because nobody really knows you're wearing them. You can't see it. They don't know. It's only your own psyche or your own lack of confidence that, 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 uh, that stops you doing some of these things. And, you know, when people do find out, they really will help you. How do I enjoy life today? Well, I've got my sons, and my wife, and my mum and dad, and my brothers, my daughter-in-law, my granddaughter, all help me to enjoy life. No, I can't sail anymore. No, I can't play golf. I can't go rough camping on Dartmoor with the scouts and teach them how to night navigate. Um, I can't go to the pub for a pint. Yeah, there's nothing better on a Sunday lunchtime. Go down there and put the world straight. I still go down to the pub and put the world straight, but I'm too sober for anybody to listen to me. So, you know, it's a bit of a, yeah, a, bit of a dead loss, really. Um, and I think that's probably about it. But um, what Liz had to say is what's happened to me. So uh, thank you very much for listening to me.